Well, I've said 25 times in 25 years that you'd like to be um, on the last week or two and have a mathematical chance to compete for a conference championship because of the win at Maryland um, and a couple of big wins last week. We're in that position, uh, unfortunately. It's not all in our control, but I like the fact that we're in the position. I was very pleased with how we played in a tough environment. I think we're starting to play with a little Michigan State toughness instead of how we were playing for a while. Uh, we made some mistakes. We still turned the ball over a little bit too much in the first half, but uh, we didn't let those mistakes carry on. Uh, Xavier has been terrific. Um, if he, I keep saying this uh, for a week or two just because I saw it, if he isn't the best defensive player in this league, I don't know who is. But offensively, he's been very good too. He made some big time plays. Uh, the 29 points we got out of our two freshmen, Rocket's getting better, Malik is getting better, I uh, was encouraging. Um, and I thought we got some minutes out of Arns and Kithier. Uh, he's showing that he's been better and better. Uh, the next chore is to get a little bit more out of Frosty and, and to get Cash a little rest and I'll get a little bit more out of uh, Gabe Brown. I mean, I think that is critical for us moving forward, especially in a game like this with the wing guys they have. As far as Penn State, you know, they've lost a couple games uh, in this week, but don't read into it. It's just like everybody else. You know, everybody goes through that stretch. It's who you play and where you play them and when you play them. And it's the Big Ten has made the scheduling so difficult for all of us in that respect. Uh, uh, play, they play well at home. 14 and 2 at home, everybody knows that. And uh, have some big, strong guys up front with a hard matchup with Stevens. I mean, he's big enough to go against your big guys, and he's athletic enough and puts it on the floor well enough to go against your guards. Um, I think he is one of the best players in the league. He's averaging 18 and 7 rebounds. But the threat I also worry about are all those other wings have had moments when they've really shot the ball well. Very good on the transition on the break. And Watkins, when he's in the game, they're going to him. Right? He plays 20 minutes a game. But when he's in there, he's getting touches. I think what we haven't realized is the last six games, Myron Jones, who went, all he did against us was go six for eight not from the three and almost single-handedly beat us. He's now played in one game, so that should give him a better warm-up for our game, uh, which is typical. So uh, I think he... Uh, he scored 20 against us. He hit six threes. He was playing some of the best basketball. He was second leading scorer, and I guess he went out with Mono or something and missed six games. Played in the last game quite a few minutes, 23 or 24, and now he'll be raring to go for us. So uh, I am excited. I, I really am. I, I think that in life you get a chance to do some things. And I told my team we've got to figure out how to play for the players that have been here, how to play for the program, how to play for our fans, how to play for their family, and most of all, how to play for their teammates. But when you get in a position like this, um, I think you got a chance to maybe work to accomplish something that seldom happens, and that's we've been through more adversity than Carter got liver pills. We all know that in a lot of different ways, but we we didn't hang our heads. We, we, we stuck in the fight. Um, I would ask all the, uh, the Twitter people, don't compliment our guys this week. <laughs> don't insult them. Just let them go. Uh, and I told them, that, you know, the same people that are were the same people that were, were killing you. So um, hopefully we've learned some lessons. Hopefully we've stayed focused. And... Uh, to finish like this, uh, I don't know how many ranked teams we're going to play in the end. Uh, Max, Matt, you guys. I mean, I think down the stretch we played like six out of seven or maybe more. And maybe it's that way with total. But you got two more ranked teams coming in. One at their place, Penn State, one at home. So it doesn't get any easier, but it's one at a time, like we said at Maryland. And we're looking forward to the game. I rest the microphone away from him. So, I know her, Larry. Hmm? She gave me a stick eye like my wife gives me. I gave her a really bad hair handball. So, give me kind of a, a sense, Tom. Was Saturday kind of?
kind of the high watermark for you guys as far as the way you played? You know, just the, the way you played. And then second part of that, two questions, and then I won't take it back. Um, do you feel like maybe you're a little bit over the hump, March has sunk in, and your guys are, are ready to go? I was going to tell our media, but I think it was their media that asked it. You know, I don't know. The March thing is cool and something to hang your hat on. And, you know, why will Izzo's teams be better than March? It's, to me, it's it's almost saying, why doesn't Izzo do anything in November, December, January, February? But at the same time, so I don't think it's that. I, I don't think we're over a hump. I mean, I, gosh, we still had some bad turnovers the first half. But I think we, we learned that if we we kind of really were, you know, pulling from one another a little bit more and uh, we kind of overcame some of the issues and that's taking a step in the right direction. I mean, in this league, every time you feel good, I mean, I felt good after uh, Illinois, Michigan, and Minnesota, you know, we're playing some of our best basketball. All of a sudden we went to Purdue and lost by 100. So in this league, um, I'm never going to feel good until the league's over. And uh, But I am feeling like we have different guys making progress. And uh, I just, I believe in Cassius. You know, I, I still think, you know, like, it's the first time he said to me, those turnovers were ridiculous. And of course, in a very polite way, I totally agreed with him. Um, but if he sees it and knows it, I ain't worried about him. Xavier, he's been playing great. The guy that's we needed to step up into the more of the either Butler, or Batman, or Robin mold was was Aaron, and he's been a lot more consistent in the last five, six games. He's consistent defensively. He's getting to the boards more. He's scoring a little bit more. So I think we, you know, that that's been a great help. And even though Kyle Arns has still been a little up and down, he, he brings a little bit to the table of. Uh, he and Kithier bring something that it's it's solidness is the best word I can come up with. They're they're kind of very solid. Uh, Xavier knows what they're going to do. Cassius knows what they're going to do. So it's been uh, a combination of a lot of things. Did we take a giant step? Sure, you go there in game day when you, some of you that were there, the problem was off the chain. Um, we made some progress, but not ready to not stop. Start sleeping nights or something. <clears throat> you you kind of alluded to, to Kyle and, and earlier talked about Gabe needing to play a little, little better. I guess from him and also from Bingham, um, was there, and I'm sure there was some frustration with the three that he took, but was there some positive with the toughness of, of getting in Smith's face? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I wish I knew what happened totally there, but. I guess I, I did like the fact that, uh, you know, in talking about Marcus, I like the fact that he didn't back down from anybody. I mean, we need that on this team. As far as the three, you know, uh, you know, people got to understand when you're shooting 11%, you don't feel comfortable with somebody shooting a three. And, you know, and that means that his coach is holding him back. And no, that's not true. I mean, if you shoot well in practice and you shoot well in the game, that's what's going to happen. I think he understands now that he can do more. You know, the mm -hmm. Illinois game, he had 12 rebounds, five or six block shots, did a hell of a job, and went over two from the field and played 20 some minutes. Um, so, you know, Mark, I mean, Marky and I had a long talk on Sunday. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think he practiced good today. I, you know, I, I just keep forgetting how young they are. But maybe I got a group with some of those sophomores that are um, young and, uh, is he immature a bad word? I don't think so. You know, I can think of some pretty damn good players I had here that were immature as sophomores. Uh, in fact, a lot of them, you know, we just we just changed the process so much that we expect everybody to be great. But I, I, I still have faith in Marky. I think this is a game because they have two bigs down low. It's easier game to play in. Um, if it's giving away the scouting report, I don't want him jacking threes right now. And you know what? He is a good shooter. He's going through a tough time, and it's not the time to experiment during the games. The games are too tight. So I think we've got that worked out. Uh, but I do think he'll play a little bit more and uh, because he has some things to offer against two really big guys, especially 
especially in Watkins, who can really score it in there. After the Iowa game, you looked genuinely excited about the next game. Did you kind of sense a performance like that could be coming? Mm-hmm. You know, I made some dumb statements in my life, many of them, in fact. But, you know, I, I did give one of them to the players that day that I said, if we, if we can beat Iowa, you know, we're going to beat Maryland. And that sounds arrogant and cocky, and it's not, because I have tremendous respect for Maryland. But I, I just felt like, number one, um, we were building a little bit. Number two, I think my team um, needs to know and understand. That's why I came up with that thing a couple weeks ago. You know, I, you know, the long way maturity sometimes goes lack of confidence. The long way experience goes lack of confidence. So, um, you know, some of it was trying to prove to them. Some of it was my whole staff. I just said this is going to be the mentality going in. And now I look at it like we got a chance to do something that. Uh, forget basketball players or football or athletes, people in general, you know, can you get up one more time and get knocked down? The old adage, the old saying, and, and trust me when I say we were knocked a lot and uh, and we've been hanging and getting up and getting up and, you know, we got a couple of runs on that ladder to go now. I think it was uh, the second half of the Iowa game, uh, they had reported on the broadcast that you had said something to Cassius about Hey, be your best player at more than one point. His evolution this whole season has been a story in itself, but is he starting to see maybe the, the end of, of his career here, and maybe is that helping him maybe focus some of his energy in the positive? Well, I think everybody does when you get to be a senior and you, you, you look at it, but his has been so clouded that I, you know, I'm not sure, but that was a profound thing to say, wasn't it? You know, if you go score one point in the second half, it'd be nice if you so I'm not sure that was any uh, thing that'll go down in the archives as one of the great speeches of all time. It was just an honest statement to a kid that I have a lot of respect for and I believe in. Um, but he is, you know, I mean, he's practicing a little different. He's um, getting that swagger back will be important for him. And as I've said, you know, for three and a half months, I mean, encourage it. I, I don't always understand it, but I always will be there for him. And that's kind of the way I've approached the whole year. Sometimes I bite a few fingers off because I want to be able to help him through things. But uh, I think right now he's about as focused in as I've seen him in the three months. Is because at the end, is it because maybe he's a man of March? Is it because he just tasted some of the things that he got to taste last year and tasted pretty good? And, like to uh, make a, a little one here. So I don't know. It's never a good feeling when you when you don't have destiny in your own hands. And right now we don't. But I know this. Uh, we have a chance until we lose. So we have some of the destiny in our own hands. Tom, Mark is not a, Turgeon is not a guy prone to hyperbole. And after the game, he seemed genuinely stunned when he said, that wasn't the Michigan State team that he played here in East Lansing. What do you credit most to the next step these guys have taken? Hmm. I, I think we're a little tougher. I think we've, we've we've had to do it so many different ways. You know, I've coached different. I mean, I think everybody would agree with that. Or most people, um, uh, we, we, you know, trying to get those young guys around. Uh, you know, maybe getting Julius in there a little bit more. He brings some of that. Kithier brings some of that. Um, but I think Xavier has a lot to do with it. He's been a man child in there. You know, he's defended by himself against two very, very, very good post guys. I mean, this week he might guard a post, he might guard Stevens. You know, he might have to guard a perimeter guy kind of now. Um, he's been the most versatile player on my team, and, and uh, he's probably been the most consistent steadiest and I think uh, that has helped uh, I think Rocket getting uh, you know we, we have two real good defenders in there three with with Xavier but uh, with Henny and with Aaron and, and Rocket we got two potential lockdown defenders and he still find a way to score some points um, you know what I'd like to see now is take that toughness to start dominating on the boards and not just winning because the rebound that has hurt us in some of the games we've lost to, as we all know. 
well. So turnover and rebounding will still be a key, but I think uh, I think I've got a little bit team, a tougher team that has grown up a little bit. Tom, you mentioned just a minute ago you guys getting it back up off the mat after some things, and now you're going to a Penn State team that's lost three or four. They're playing their senior night with guys like Stevens and Watkins their last game. Just kind of, is that just kind of the way it is? Yeah, does every game have to be a celebration? You know, a jersey night, a shirt night, a president's coming to town night. I mean, you know, I guess that's a compliment. I don't know. I don't like the compliment as much anymore. But But I mean, this is a team that's going to be fighting. Oh, yeah. They're crazy, too, the same way you guys are. But but we're going to be fighting, too. And that's what I feel a little different about. I I agree with you. Um, and, And I don't look at them as being any different of a team. I just look at they hit their three out of four that we might have hit in the middle of the year, that Ohio State and Michigan hit at the beginning of the year. Everybody's gone through it in this conference. Illinois hit it later in the year. Um, I, I'd say the five or six teams that are somewhat contenders, everybody's hit it. Wisconsin was so bad early. Um, you know, he's done an incredible job there. Um, I just, uh, a lot of good coaching jobs done, but, uh, but some of it, I mean, I hate to blame it because I'll take abuse, but the schedule has been bizarre. And, you know, when you have stretches like we did with three home games and then five out of six on the road or whatever it is, four out of five, um, there's going to be some losses in there, especially on who you play. You know, we don't play everybody twice. It's just, it's hard for a fan, a media member, or a coach to look at his team and say, wow, we're good, or wow, we are not very good because it's all dependent on that schedule that, and that's why that one day I gave you guys that thing to look at, because it is, it hasn't gotten enough play for how difficult it is when you have a unbalanced schedule to start, but now you go to 20 games, and then you have some bizarre things that happened uh, to some of the teams, including us, where you're playing three in a row one way or three in a row the other, uh, makes it more difficult. So I think, Penn State, I mean, it's senior night. <laughs> They've got some seniors that have made that program. You know, it reminds me of the, the Cleves, Peter, you know, uh, era uh, where you know, Peterson and guys like that that built your whole program. I mean, you look at Penn State basketball, this has been some of the best years in a long time. And, and so, yeah, they're going to be an all time high. They still have a chance, they're just as mathematically in it as we are really. I mean, everybody's got a chance that still has a mathematical chance. And I think it's going to be a war. I think it's going to be their physical to start with. Um, they have a bunch of junkyard dogs, man. I, I love his team. It's, uh, those wings play so hard. Stevens is, you know, almost came out twice and he's still there. And by the way, what a great move on his part to be like he is, you know, what a great move guy at Maryland, you know, he stayed in school, a guy at Kentucky, and now they're having big time years, and nobody's having a better year in our league than Stevens, and he's kind of deserved it, earned it. Going back to being a tougher team, it's definitely ramped up against Iowa and then this last game, but you mentioned when the 2000 team was here for, the, for that Maryland game that they had talked to the guys in the locker room about all of that. So have you seen it? How have maybe has that helped them realize that you, to get back to the brand of basketball that you guys pride yourselves on? Or where is just, I guess, you know, this coming from, this whole toughness getting? Well, I've tried to be a little different. You know, I've tried to, as they say, take the gloves off a little bit. I, I think that any time you have the Cleveses and Anagonyes and people like that come back and, and they talk to them, most of the time I wasn't there, so I couldn't even tell you what they talked about, and that's the way everybody wanted it, but including me. But uh, I think some of it's maturity. You know, we've, we're, we're getting older. Uh, freshmen aren't sophomores anymore. Some of it is I've decided that I can't. Um, I got to be me. They got to be them. I got a job to do. They got a job to do. There's probably a bazillion reasons. All I know is it is happening. Now, the next thing is, can we maintain that and can we do that consistently? Um, and that'll be the job of myself, my staff, uh, Cash, Aaron, or Kyle, and, uh, and Xavier, I think. The players got to hold players accountable, too. And, uh, but it's exciting. It's exciting to, to be in this position. Um, 
You know, we could play awfully good and lose both games, as everybody knows. But we've made some progress now that I think we can build on. We need a little help, but we got to help ourselves first before we can wish for anything else. Rockets well, work on the defensive end is, is obviously a claim that has become pretty consistent. I'm wondering how offensively it looked like only one bad shot, and that was the one that got stuck. Are you almost happy when he takes that shot and it's stuck in between the glass and the rim to remind him because not to take those? <laughs> you know, the Rock's going to, um, he's come so far in learning what a good shot and a bad shot is. And, uh, you know, he's one of those guys uh, that he, he really, if people, if you, I, I think you guys see it because you're just talking about it. I mean, he's come so far with the, <coughs> step back between the leg, jacking the shots, you don't see that. He's starting to drive the ball a little more, which he is really hard to stay in front of. I don't care who's guarding him. And uh, he's getting a little better with that ball now and and uh, getting shots that he's getting the ball ready. Um, I've been so pleased with his progress. And defensively, when you take a guy that was a good offensive player, um, defensively, He's made giant swings, but he has, you know, you talk in, in answering uh, questions about our toughness. Um, he brings that Detroit Flint dog mentality that he's going to get after. You. <coughs> you know, like there's some of the arguments and huddles with him are, I don't need help. I want to get, uh, let me guard this guy. Let me guard that guy. You know, that was old school for me, man. I, I used to have four guys that would fight me, and they all wanted to guard somebody. I don't quite have that yet, but I'm getting one that wants to on a consistent basis. Xavier's the other one. And so, uh, yeah, I think maybe those are reminders, but I think he's learning every day. Um, spending more time in your shooting. Uh, he's been, uh, I think a lot of people questioned um, even when we got him or what he would be like uh, for a million reasons. Um, he's been a treat, man. I, I, I actually enjoy having that kid around because I know I got a warrior. I know I got a guy that I get in a foxhole with him any day. I'll turn my back to anybody if I got him sitting there with me because he's the uh, best thing him is yet to come. Tom, we got two things for you. Um, Cassius, uh, so much of the discussion, maybe preseason, was about keeping him fresh and his body from wearing down. Obviously, that, that changed for serious reasons. Um, I'm just curious, how is he? Physically, and how have you noticed that? You know, have you done anything special, I guess, to sort of keep him fresh amid a lot of unusual things? Um, yeah, you know, I've tried, but uh, but I think what you're trying to say, and, and I agree with you, is is uh, you know I can do some things in practice, or I haven't done a good job in a game, you know, but he finds ways to you know figure out where he can take some time off and that. I don't think it's the physical grind that's gotten him at all this year. I think it's the mental grind and that and the lack of sleep and all those things that have really been difficult for him. Um, but I did say going down the stretch here, now we get into games where you're, you're playing even more games in a row, then you get into the Big Ten tournament, then you get in the NCAA tournament, you know. Um, probably I haven't done a good enough job getting Foster more and more ready. He's had some good games early. And, he struggled some, and uh, so it's hard for him to have confidence if I don't have confidence. And so I got to do a better job there because that, if we can just get Cash, you know, a couple minutes, you know, get him a minute when there's a timeout, and get him a couple minutes, and all of a sudden he's playing 32 or three instead of 37 or eight. I think it would benefit us, him, and everybody else. And then the other thing I wanted to ask you, just really quick, I'm completely unrelated to that. Uh, did you consider at all doing the two games stay on the road thing, um, especially with spring break, and why or why not? I guess. Yeah, I did. In fact, we were really going to do that. And then, um, you know, when you're in Washington D.C. and a little more difficult to practice, and so far from everything, you know, it was a 50-minute ride to the airport. You know, it's it's home for Max, but the rest of us are like, you know, Iron Mountain. You go around the corner, you get to the police station, you go the other way to high school, you take a little walk, jog to the right, you get to the hospital and uh, jails over on the left. So we got them all right there, you know, they're all within a couple blocks and uh, 
And we just felt like, uh, you know, because it is spring break, there wouldn't be as many distractions here, but we get a lot done. Um, could have different practices, meetings, film sessions here without having to travel. So I think it was a good decision, just like I think it was a good decision to go to Indiana, you know. Um, I probably should have had Xavier sleep at my house last night so he get a good night's sleep, but other than that, everybody else, I, I think it's worked out pretty good. We got home late. We didn't even have a meeting until 1.30. I think we're pretty fresh. I, I really do, and I think uh, it's all worked out pretty well. It, with, with the toughness, it seems like the last two games that Malik has kind of been a, a big part of that component. It seems like he's kind of cracked the shell a little bit. Uh, what what do you think has caused that, the, the emergence from that? You know, those freshmen are all kind of personalities. They're kind of, well, Rockets is more like mine. The other guys are more. Uh, I, we told him he's got to get more aggressive. He's got to be, you know, he's got to, he, he can guard. I mean, he's like a Brandon Dawson. He can guard guards and he can guard bigs, you know. And so we just spent a little more time with him. We talked to him about it. We, uh, you know, plan him a little bit more. Him back in the starting lineup, I mean, it's still going to be, you know, we could play Illinois in the tournament and start Marky. I mean, that's going to happen, but I think he's now feeling like he's got a spot and that uh, he's got a value to this team. And, and I think he is a tough kid. He's a very athletic kid, um, and he's learning how to play harder. I think Xavier has done uh, a really good job with him. Um, and Kith here, he spends a lot of time, and they have the ability to do that. Marky is going to have the ability to do that, I'm telling you. That kid gets one more summer under his belt. He's going to be He'll be shooting threes. He'll be rebounding the ball. He'll be blocking shots. It's just that he's almost lost weight every month here because he's there in season, you know, and he's got the problem that most of us wish we had, right? But um, I, I think that's why it's been better for him, I hope. After the game at Maryland, Rocket talked about his growth, and he said he's learned – the better defense he plays, the better offensive opportunities that he gets to have heard him say that comparing where he started the season. How much does that say about his change? And he said it was you drilling him with it. Yeah, you know, he's able to take a little uh, uh, criticism uh, the right way. You know, he struggled with that early. Every once in a while, he's still like, you know, wants to fight City Hall. But um, again, I. I'm just the type of coach, I kind of like that, you know, um, to a certain extent. But uh, I think he's realized he's getting shots on the break because we defend better, we rebound better. Uh, I think he realizes that taking the ball to the basket has been a big thing and doing things that maybe were more unconventional for him. You know, the guarding, uh, he's starting to rebound a little bit as a guard. He's really learned how to run that lane. He was pathetic at it early in the year and uh, if you took a guy and you said he went from D to A you know or C to A I mean he's made about as good a progress and yet he'll still take a bad shot and he'll still make a defensive lapse because he reminds me of, of Keith Appling in the way that he he gets into a guy and he doesn't realize sometimes we're going under screen sometimes he just walks in he locks in, he's like a lamprey on a lake trout, you know, he's on there and he ain't moving. And uh, so he's got to learn how to do some of those things, but uh, he's receptive to it. Now, I think he had enough success that he says, maybe these guys aren't insane. Maybe they actually can help me. Anything else? Or was that lamprey on a lake, lake trout? <laughs> lamprey. I'm just gonna, uh, lamprey like blood suckers, you know. They get on. I added to the list, man. I just added to the list. Aren't you happy that I improved your vocabulary over the years? <laughs> yeah. Got a couple more off uh, the yeah. scene that I'll give you, but uh, those are pretty good for ones on. But hey, I, I, you know, I, I'll just close by saying, um, for me, this is uh, is big on how we play. You know, winning is important. Uh, I, I, I swear to you, I remember sitting in that back room when Andre and them were here in the fourth Big Ten championship, and we needed Ohio State to win on a Thursday. 
and uh, I mean, we were all jumping around and we were cheering, you know, and maybe I've matured, maybe I'm getting old, maybe not. But the difference was we were one game out, you know, everybody was, there were three teams that were really close. We dug ourselves a hole, so I did not jump around when Minnesota blew that lead. I didn't, I just said, you know, if we do our job and beat Maryland, and then now you gotta do your job again and, and win this game, you know, then at least the odds are with you that, you know, maybe you deserve getting something. And yet, uh, I'm, I'm so looking forward to trying to get that, but I'm more looking forward, is this team getting better now? And are we making some progress? And are we gonna be in the right place at the right time to, you know, that Big Ten tournament is gonna be, I mean, I think it'll be tougher than the NCAA tournament, at least to start with. I mean, oh, if you're, if, you know, we, we could be damn good and be a five or six seed in that thing. And, who are you going to play that you're going to go home and say, oh, good, we get to play so-and-so. And that probably isn't happening. So uh, it's, it's uh, of all the lessons I've learned over the last few years, you know, uh, you know what we've gone through, what Cash has gone through, what, you know, we, we so much forget about Josh, what he's gone through. Um, it's, it's taught me a lot, Kyle Arndt, you know, ready to give up basketball and, and then, you know, fighting through one more time and kind of dealing with his injuries and questioning whether he'd be able to walk later on in life. Uh, I think it's been a good life lesson for all of us, and hopefully you've enjoyed them. Um, I've given you a lot. We still make some crazy plays. We still turn it over a little too much, but we're, we're making progress, and we haven't let people get us down and that's a that's a great quality that those guys will take with years to come so appreciate it look forward to seeing you guys at Penn State